and welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to take a look into water splash photography at home. So I'm just here in my garage at this moment and I'm going to show you how you can get started taking some awesome water splash images. Here's an example of what I'm going to create today with you and let's hop right into it. Alright, so I have everything set up now. Here in the left side of the screen I have my D5100 set up um, at 200 of a second manual focus with the standard 18 to 55 millimeter stock or cat lens. Um, I have a glass plate here with a glass half full and there's an ice cube in front of it that we're going to use to create the splashes. The white thing you see here is a homemade scrim. It's made out of tracing paper, but you can also use a yeah, bed linen, something that's transparent and see-through and that will diffuse the light. A softbox might, uh, might be good also. And on the far end, there's a single flash, the Godox AD200 that I'm going to use for this shoot. So what we're going to do now, I have a remote trigger here that I'm going to use and I'm going to drop the ice cube into the glass and I try to match that up with the shutter. So that when the water splashes in the air and the flash goes off. The first image will be to get the exposure right. I want the shutter speed to be as fast as possible, so that will be at 200th of a second. I'm on manual focus and you have to balance the flash so that you get a nice yeah, gradient backdrop and not too much light. Except if you want everything light and white then you should raise it, but that's just personal preference about the exposure of your image. So I'm going to do this in a bit of a time lapse and I'll show you the end result. So I'm working here editing my video and I saw that I forgot to mention an important step. Um, make sure that the first image you take is a properly exposed image and it has a clean glass surface or surface around the glass. Just a clean shot, still water in the end. Once you have all your splashes you can edit them together. Uh, so you have the clean surface in the bottom and then with another layer you're gonna brush in the splashes. So it looks like you have a clean glass and only the splashes are coming out of it. Let's continue. So you can give this as many tries as you want, um, it's water, it's a unique image every single time you capture a splash. So for the video purposes here I'm just going to continue with the current images. Um, but yeah, just continue until you get the results that you're looking for. And the final step is to take the images into Photoshop, uh, which I've done here. I imported the first image that we took with the yeah, clean glass, still water and normal exposure. And I added the last image with all the water splashing around and the mess on the table. So we're going to add these two together. Um, first we have to line them up. As you can see 
the glass shifted or the camera moved um, it's not in the same position as we started out with so I'm going to lower the opacity for this one and then we're going to see if we can match it up to the other image Let's press ctrl T to move it around and use the arrow keys a bit let's continue with this for now when we could toggle this layer now you can see everything is lining up properly so that's fine I'm going to raise the opacity again and now I'm going to you can do this with as many images uh, stacked together if you want to if you just have that one droplet flying around just add the other image and you can add it or mask it out the same way as we're going to do now so we're going to add a mask to this image and then I'm going to invert the mask pressing ctrl I and now we can just use a brush uh, make sure you have solid black and white used for this I'm gonna set it to white so we can brush things in onto the mask I'll increase this one now pestium flow is now at a hundred percent so everything we brush is um, added directly to 100 percent so I'm gonna see that I fill the glass now with our splash and then try to capture everything that you want from the other image and add it to this one or to your end image just brush it in when we shift click the mask um, it will hide it so you can see if you're missing something or you want to add something I really want that line here I really like the contrast of the black uh, shadow of the water and these droplets flying around I'm going to press X to uh, reverse the color selection so I'm on black now because I saw it added a little bit here which I don't want so we're going to remove that from the mask again I'm going to hit X again uh, to change it around is there anything else? a few droplets flying around and there's a bit of a difference here I can see So that's another trick you can use you can turn off the mask but still uh, paint on the mask so we can add these little droplets um, to the other image or mask without having the mask active so this is just a rough selection just add the droplets you want you can go as into as many details as you want um, for the video purpose I'm just doing a quick and dirty edit on this one uh, to keep it short and now you should have a fairly yeah, decent looking splash image of your two images merged together um, the only thing that's bothered me at this moment is that it's not level so I'm just going to group these two images I'm going to I use ctrl G for, jet, for that one I'm going to duplicate them with ctrl J and then I'm going to merge the last group so I still have everything in here and I can edit, adjust, do anything I want and I have the same image uh, merged to one layer here so I'm going to straighten this one. This maybe original. And just 
crop it a bit, recompose the image. A nice clean centered look. So that was it for this video. Um, just a quick and easy splash photography startup guide for you, uh, which you can try at home. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like if you liked it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.